Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna and today we will cover the topic of mediastinum. What is the mediastinum? Mediastinum is the median septum of the thorax. So you can say if the thoracic cavity is basically the cavity that lies beneath your entire thoracic cage. So you can say that this thoracic cavity is partitioned into two halves by the mediastinum as it is a median septum lying along the median plane. So mediastinum, you can say it's like a tissue that is separating your thoracic cavity into a right and a left half. So then the lung is right here and the other lung is here. Inside the mediastinum will be lying a couple of structures that are coming to the heart from the heart and the structures that are coming through the superior aperture of the thorax and other structures that we'll discuss today. So if you look at it in a sagittal view, this is the manubrium. This is the sternal body. This is your anterior part. And posteriorly are the thoracic vertebra. So suppose we're taking a sagittal section right through your median plane. Anteriorly is this, this is the manubrium. This is the sternal angle where manubrium is joining with the sternal body and this is the entire sternum these are the thoracic vertebrae and over here is the pleura the parietal pleura in a, in the mediastinal part known as the mediastinal pleura so overall mediastinum's boundaries are anteriorly the entire sternum posteriorly the vertebral column superiorly the, the thoracic inlet or the superior aperture that we studied earlier and inferiorly is obviously the diaphragm on either side of the mediastinum are the mediastinal pleurae that are parietal pleurae of the lungs. Further, there is division of the mediastinum into a superior and an inferior mediastinum. Inferior is further divided into three types of mediastinums. First, let's do the superior inferior division. How is this division formed? Well, an imaginary line is drawn from the lower border of the fourth thoracic vertebra that is extending anteriorly to the manubriosternal joint or the sternal angle. Above this line is your superior mediastinum and below it is the inferior mediastinum. Now the inferior mediastinum is further divided into three types of mediastinums. The middle mediastinum which carries your main organ, the heart. Anterior to the heart is your anterior mediastinum. Mediastinum that contains the heart is the middle mediastinum. And finally, behind the heart is your posterior mediastinum. Let's individually discuss the boundaries of each of these mediastinum. First, let's talk about your superior mediastinum. The superior mediastinum boundaries are anteriorly, you can see it's the manubrium. Posteriorly are the upper four thoracic vertebras. Superiorly is the plane of thoracic inlet and inferiorly is this imaginary line that we've talked about. The anterior mediastinum's boundaries are anteriorly the body of sternum, posteriorly the contents of your middle mediastinum like the pericardium, the heart, and on either side is the mediastinal pleura, inferiorly is your diaphragm. The middle mediastinum boundaries are anteriorly are the contents of the anterior mediastinum, posteriorly are the contents of the posterior mediastinum, superiorly is the imaginary line and inferiorly is the spare surface of the diaphragm. And posterior mediastinum's boundaries are anteriorly the pericardium or the contents of the middle mediastinum, posteriorly your lower eight thoracic vertebra, superiorly your imaginary line and inferiorly the diaphragm. So these were the boundaries. The important part of mediastinum are the contents that are lying in each mediastinum. So let's talk about the superior mediastinum first. What are the contents of the superior mediastinum? These are mostly the contents that were coming in and out of your thoracic aperture. So trachea, esophagus, thoracic duct, arteries including the branches of your arch of aorta. So the arch of aorta gave, on the right side it gave, right brachiocephalic trunk on the left side it gave left common carotid and left subclavian artery the veins include your superior vena cava obviously that has to enter your heart is going to pass through uh, your superior mediastinum the superior vena cava and then it enters the heart so the upper half of the superior vena cava moreover there is the right and left brachiocephalic veins just like we studied in the superior aperture the vagus nerve 
that has to go towards the heart, the phrenic nerve that has to go supply the diaphragm, and a very important nerve known as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the superior mediastinum's content is left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Why am I saying this? Because the right like recurrent laryngeal nerve is not a content of your superior mediastinum. It's necessary to know that the left side of recurrent laryngeal nerve lies inside your superior mediastinum. Uh, moreover, there is the remnants of the thymus and some lymph nodes like the paratracheal nodes, the tracheobronchial lymph node. Let's talk about the contents of the anterior mediastinum. In the anterior mediastinum, there is a ligament that is basically connecting your heart, your pericardium to the sternum. So hence, the name is sternopericardial ligament. The con major content of the anterior mediastinum is the sternopericardial ligament. Others uh, include the mediastinal branches of your internal thoracic artery, some areolar tissue, some lymphatics, and lower part of your thymus. Let's talk about the contents of the middle mediastinum. Very simple, the middle mediastinum in a very obvious way carries your heart and obviously the arteries and veins coming out of your heart will also be a content of the middle mediastinum hence the ascending aorta and the arch of aorta the pulmonary trunk pulmonary veins and obviously the inferior half of your superior vena cava the arch of azygous vein that is entering your superior vena cava deep cardiac plexus nerves the phrenic nerve, the bifurcation of trachea, and the tracheobronchial nodes also lie here. Moving on, let's talk about the contents of the posterior mediastinum. Well, as you all know that the esophagus is the main content here, along with what? The descending thoracic aorta. As you know, the ascending aorta, then the arch of aorta, and then the descending aorta is formed. So the descending aorta is a very important content along with the esophagus. Apart from that, there is, there is the entire family of azygous vein, like the azygous vein, hemi azygous vein, the accessory hemi azygous vein. The nerves include the splanchnic nerves that come out of your thoracic sympathetic ganglia, if you remember, and the thoracic duct and the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. So that was all that you need to know in theory of the mediastinum. Now let's talk about an important clinical related to the mediastinum. So the mediastinum is basically a very sensitive structure and since it's kept tight in the thoracic cavity, there is a chance that if there is any kind of mass building in your thoracic cavity, it will enter the mediastinum and cause obstruction of the structures that are inside the mediastinum. For example, in bronchogenic carcinoma, which is the lung cancer, will cause the mediastinal syndrome. What is the mediastinal syndrome? It is compression of mediastinal structures due to a mass or a tumor which gives rise to a group of symptoms which are the obstructive symptoms so for example if the mass is pressing along the trachea it will cause dyspnea so trachea then it will cause dyspnea if it is touching your esophagus it will cause dysphagia there will be difficulty in swallowing if this mass is pressing against your Superior vena cava then due to the blockage of superior vena cava there will be engorgement of your veins of the upper half of the body. Apart from that as I mentioned earlier the left recurrent laryngeal will, nerve will be at sake. This is the nerve that is supplying your larynx and larynx is the place that creates voice. So uh, that carries your vocal cords. Hence there will be hoarseness of voice due to left recurrent laryngeal nerve pressure. Hoarseness in the voice. Due to pressure on the intercostal nerves, there will be intercostal neuralgia. Due to pressure on your vertebral column, there will be vertebral erosions. These group of symptoms are altogether known as the mediastinal syndrome. And the cause of these symptoms is the compression of structures of mediastinum due to pressure by a mass that is causing obstructive symptoms in the contents of your mediastinum. So that was all about the mediastinum. I really hope you all understood well. Thank you so much for watching.